By the time the nurse set her sights on Beverly Bertram, Wetlaufer's lust for harm remained strong, but her targets weren't always the weakest or most vulnerable. Bertram lived at home relying on Wetlaufer for occasional home care until one of those visits left her slipping into a near fatal and insulin overdose. I no longer know who I am because Elizabeth Wetlaufer consumes my life. I don't understand why she was bound bent and determined to kill me. On top of the eight patients Wetlaufer did kill, she also tried to kill Bertram and others. Bertram is the only one still alive to talk about it. I get, oh, she's in jail, don't worry about it, it's over. It's not over. We as the victims are not weak. I'm, we need care. And that doesn't mean we don't matter anymore. The 70-year-old stunned the silent courtroom, pitying the very woman who tried to kill her. Elizabeth Wetlaufer didn't get respect. I'm not condoning anything she did. But if respect had been given to her as a person, what happened wouldn't have happened. She cried for help many times, and none was given. And outside the court, her own lawyer equally humbled. We've heard a lot of really negative things in there over the past four months, and that was such a positive, life-affirming comment from someone who has every reason in the world to be angry and bitter, and it just wasn't there. Bertram hinted her own health is failing, testifying somewhat reluctantly for those who can no longer be heard. I just find it very um, annoying that my life is going to end in this manner. I'm 70 now, and I deserve better. After speaking publicly for the first time, Bertram returned home quietly, perhaps her burden somewhat lifted. John Lancaster, CBC News, St. Thomas, Ontario. The families of some of Wetlaufer's other victims spoke today as well, and here's some of that heart-wrenching testimony. I don't have my father anymore. I miss him. I really, I really miss him a lot. Every goddamn day. It's like the air I breathe, you know, he was everywhere. He'd be here today if it wasn't for the goddamn incompetence of people. Just incompetence, gross incompetence, worrying about what people are going to say about them, worried about getting in trouble, worried about how much it costs. Human life doesn't have a cost, Commissioner. Since I work in long-term care, I can't go to work without being overwhelmed with the thoughts of my dad and what events led up to his senseless death. I grieve for my mother as well, for she passed away only days after hearing the details of her husband's death in a facility that she trusted, the love of her life with, they were married for over 60 years. The commission is now hearing closing submissions from 14 additional groups and organizations. That will take the inquiry to the end of the week. From there, Justice Eileen Galise has two years to make recommendations to improve the systemic problems, but these recommendations are not binding. The province not required to make any suggested changes.